Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so excited to dive into your reading. We grabbed um, some old classic cards here. I'm really excited to see what they have to offer this situation. The insight that they have, the wisdom that they can bring. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Um, these are general readings, so take what resonates and leave the rest, okay? So for Pisces, please, Spirit, what can you show us for Pisces? What does Pisces need to know right now? Yeah, and the first card that flew out was time for a nap, and I literally knew. I was like, you know, it's coming out because we are, yep, look at this. There's change, change coming. Um, Pisces, okay, this is like a moment of quiet before uh, things change. I mean, look, look at your cards. All of this is talking about change. Um, woo, Pisces. I feel like there is a connection here, potentially in separation. Time for a nap always feels to me like the Four of Swords, and it feels like, you know, we had to take a break. We had to go to our separate corners. We had to, you know, we may have been overstimulated or we may have, you know, gotten as far as we could go with that round. And now it's like we need to heal. We need to recover all those things that were exposed to us. You know, we need to choose. Are we going to, you know, take the time to dive deep and to heal them? Or, you know, are we going to pretend they don't exist and ignore them and carry on with the same behavior that brought us to this place? And, you know, it, it, it but everybody has free will, right? So, so we don't know what people are going to choose. We can only choose for ourselves. And Pisces, with this time for a nap here, you know, when you've experienced something difficult and something that, you know, caused suffering for you or created a, a situation that was, you know, something that you had to heal from at all, it's like, we don't want to revisit that. So, you know, <laughs> there are so many ways to handle things. And I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling a conflict here, to be honest with you. I'm feeling, um... Time for a nap for Pisces. You know, it's like, do we bury our head in the sand and blame the other person? Oh, this is, uh, do we, do we, um, do you know what I mean? Do we like, I don't want to call it the easy road because ultimately in my opinion, it's the harder road, but every time that we have an opportunity to change or every time something is brought to the light for us to review for ourselves to enhance the quality of our own life, you know, we have the choice to actually heed that and lean into it, lean into the suffering, discover what the source is and heal it so that we can move on and hope to experience something different, you know? Um, but as long as we leave, if we just bury our heads in the sand and then blame the other person and say, well, you know, I was limited by their limitations and, you know, I couldn't do anything more with it. You know, I would have had to have somebody who also was ready and willing to do the work, blah, blah, blah. Um, then we can just sort of dismiss our own opportunity. We can dismiss our own, what we brought to the table that might not have been absolutely perfect and keep going and then experience it again. Or we can say to ourselves, okay, you know, I don't want to go through this again. What, if any contribution did I make? Or if I'm attracting the same type of person, let's say you're attracting narcissists over and over again. Okay, let's stop attracting narcissists and just keep that train moving. And let's start looking at where's the wounding coming from within us that tells a narcissist we're a good person candidate for their abuse. You know what I'm saying? So it feels like there came, we came to a crossroads where we're like, okay, are we going to, you know, open up and say yes to life and say yes to healing and say yes to the opportunity to expand and grow as much as we can in this life? Or are we just going to keep ourselves safe, blame the other person and keep on trucking and keep on experiencing what we're experiencing, 
right? Because ultimately the only place we can make a change is within us. And that's, that is where we're going to have the biggest impact, right? So someone here, I feel like was really emotionally blocked off. Okay. And that can be really tough to take when you're giving your emotions and you're loving and you're, you know, being generous with your emotional self and you're risking intimacy with somebody and they can't give it back to you. They can't validate it. They can't confirm it. They can't return it. They can't even a lot of times accept what you're offering them. So it came to like an impasse. Okay. It feels like you have this, the unsaid showing, I love you or like, like you without physically saying it, didn't say it yet. And, you know, there's this energy where it's with this staying in where it's almost like there is a part of you that recognizes that maybe you're better off by yourself than with someone who's taking but not giving fork in the road that doesn't always. Uh huh. So oh my. OK. Um. So things have not been, I feel like things have not really progressed since we had this, we came to this impasse, right? We came to this moment where it's like, we can't make any progress. You can't compromise and you can't rise up and you can't compromise and you can't rise up. So here we go. We have to, we have to go our separate ways. We have to either choose to heal and try to come back together, or we have to go our separate ways and agree to disagree and to agree that this connection cannot come back together. And I feel like it, it, there's been no movement, no communication, no anything with this frigid card, but we're coming to this point where it's like either it's going to end. This is the 13 card. Either this is it or somebody has to make a bold move. Somebody has to take some kind of action. I really honestly do not get the sense Pisces that this is you taking action, but you know, listen to your own intuition. I do feel like this is someone coming for you, coming towards you. I feel like this could be this person who at, didn't have, couldn't really tell you how they feel when you feel something and you don't say it, 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 it doesn't go away. It doesn't just like, oh, okay, well, now that we're broken up, I don't have to worry about that. It can kind of haunt you. Like, what if I just would have been able to say it? What if I just would have said it? You know, and a lot of times people don't even come to the conclusion that that's exactly what they're feeling until after the fact, until after the overwhelming feeling of having emotions recedes and they have the opportunity in the space to say, oh, wow, what I was feeling back there, that was actually love. And like, no wonder Pisces was upset that I wasn't able to show up for, for, for Pisces in that way, because, you know, all of the things were there, all of the signs were there, all of the things were there, but it's like, I wasn't even awakened to know enough to know that that's what love was, or that's what I was experiencing. And that's why maybe I didn't say it, or maybe I was afraid to say it, or maybe I, it's been my experience that when you acknowledge or admit any kind of vulnerability, people take advantage of it. And so I'm defensive and I don't open up and I don't say those things. Whatever the case may be, we sat in this energy for a while, okay? But now we're coming to this point where something has to change. Something has to give. We have the bold move here and we have time to go here. So what is time to go? And the time to go is a 45, which is a nine, which is the ending of a cycle. Okay. Wow. What is going on here, Pisces? Somebody is showing up in an energy. It literally says taking things very seriously, a complete, oh, a competition. I was like, it's a completion. I just said that. No, it says competition. The look in it to win it, fake it till you make it. This is someone who is coming back in a very different energy. This is someone who is like, you know, I don't know how to do this. I'm not comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable in these feelings or in these emotions. I'm, but I also like, don't want to lose you. Um, 
I think this is con this is surprising. I think this is shocking. On the bottom of the deck, Pisces, you have bride, and it says wife, partner, interested in love of a lifetime, wedding or event, a commitment or advancement. Pisces, I feel like somebody is showing up in an energy where they're far more serious and where they're taking things seriously and where they're recognizing and realizing that like, oh, hold on a second. I was feeling that way back there. I just didn't know how to deal with it. I'm not sure that they have really developed very sophisticated ways of dealing with it, but I feel like they're committed to it. I feel like they're showing up serious. They may not have all the tools that they need to like make this go seamlessly. They may still be a little jumpy, a little triggery here, but like also this person is committed. This person is seeing you, I feel like, as someone that they really want to take seriously and invest in here. Let's um, do another round on this energy here. Time for a nap. Oh my gosh. Pisces. This, this, this was like a difficult ending, it feels. It feels like, you know, um, it's like that energy when someone's breaking up with you and you know they don't want to, you know, they, they're, they're doing it because they can't handle it or because they're letting something else take a priority over something, but it's like they really have feelings for you and they don't really want to break up with you. It's that kind of energy. It's like, yeah, like I recognize that what we're doing isn't working and that we need to separate or whatever. Um, but it's not someone who's like, you know, I can't stand you. You know what I mean? Um, and honestly, with the drifting energy, this can be where sometimes you're dealing with an avoidant personality or a, not an avoidant personality, but an avoidant, um, attachment style. And it's like, you don't necessarily see the breakup coming, but this person actually, um, has been probably getting like sort of normalizing the idea for themselves that this connection is ending and over and has been sort of going through the grieving process um, because they they have a tendency to do that before you actually disconnect. And so with the drifting, it's like someone was detaching. And like when you're in love, you don't always necessarily notice that someone is detaching. You know, sometimes people really pull away, stop communicating, stop responding to your text messages or, you know, whatever. And sometimes, especially like with an avoidant, they'll be like, oh, just work got really busy or, you know, this or that because they, they're avoiding conflict. They're avoiding dealing with anything that they don't want to deal with. And yet at the same time, they're using it as an opportunity to sort of detach from the connection to sort of... Um, you know, avoid feeling what they're feeling and they disconnect. And there is this energy of sort of like watching something that you care deeply about sort of slip away from you. Um, and it's hard and it hurts. And I feel that. And I feel like, you know, it's out of your control. The only thing that you can really do at that point is sort of take a nap, you know, take that, that time to just sort of pull your energy back home and, um, heal. Take care of yourself. What is fork in the road for Pisces, please, spirit? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> there's an energy here where, okay, for some of you, you probably don't know what your person is up to, what they're doing. And, you know, sometimes that can be really hard. Sometimes like our minds, we have really creative imaginations and we can we can tell ourselves all kinds of stories. Oh, they're pining after us or, oh, they're out, you know, probably forging new relationships or whatever, you know, like we can be as cruel to ourselves as we, we can think of in this in these kind of difficult moments here um, where we're really in our feelings and our feelings aren't very stable. And I feel here like, you know, this person may not necessarily know completely what the whole picture of your life is. You may not know completely what the whole picture of their life is, but I feel there is an energy with the secret admirer here of we haven't actually completely disconnected because we still, we're still either watching each other or, you know, possibly if we have friends in common, we're talking to them together. If we are connected on social media, 
But even if there is not an element of spying here, a secret admirer is someone who is like secretly fantasizing about things working out with you. It's somebody who secretly does have feelings for you and secretly, you know, they're just not expressing them. They're keeping them to themselves. And I feel like this person they they don't know why they feel the way they do. They're not really sure why this is taking a turn. It may be where someone is an avoidant personality and they've been able to walk away from relationships scot-free in the past, like no worries, you know, uh, I, they can just leave it and go. But with this one, it's like, you know, I I actually kind of, I, I really wonder what Pisces is up to. I don't really know. There's no movement. There's no communication, you know, because Pisces will go high priestess on you. And, um, and it's like this person is left here kind of wondering what is all this? Why is this different than every other relationship I've had? And I feel like this person even spent time trying to convince themselves maybe that they were better off without the relationship. Oftentimes, especially, and I don't mean to keep going back to avoiding attachment styles because every single person here is not dealing with that. But some of you clearly are, cause this has been coming up a bit, um, they try to convince themselves that they're better off. They try to, they, they like tell themselves they're happier without the thing. You know what I mean? Cause they're avoidant. They're not, they're not over here trying to get all up in their feelings. So you have, but there's this loyalty at the bottom of the deck. And it's like, I keep coming back around to this. If for whatever reason, I can't really just let this go and move on. And it's causing this person to evaluate why is this? Time to go. Can I get one more? Uh-huh. So, there is an energy here, Pisces, for sure, where, you know, the confusion has an opportunity to give way to what we know, our deep inner knowing. And, you know, when you're someone who is busy trying to accommodate your wounding in life, a lot of times you don't listen to your intuition. You don't listen to your gut. You don't listen to your heart. You really keep it very mental spacey. Um, because you're trying to justify whatever is convenient for you to avoid dealing with your wounding, basically. I mean, in a nutshell, I'm just going to sum it up that way. I'm not a psychologist and I haven't studied these things like in college or something like that, but, um, this is just my opinion. So I'm just letting you know. All right. <laughs> um, my, the, which comes from my experiences. Um, okay. So what I'm telling you is that this is someone who, when the deep inner knowing strikes, when it really hits, when you have been running from your intuition, when you have been running from your heart, when you have been running and you start getting this nagging feeling of why is this different? Why is this different? And it causes you to even glance inward. Your inward self is there ready to say, because you love them, <laughs> you know, because they matter to you, because this isn't just some discarded person in your life, because this person matters to you, because you care about this person, because there's something deeper here to your connection. And it's like almost, I feel as if it's a huge awakening to this person of like, whoa, you know, I have been avoiding this. And it's crazy because how I feel, the energy that I feel is part of the confusion is that this person really does want a soft place to fall. They really do want a sense of connection. But when they have the opportunity for it, they're sabotaging it. So on the one hand, they're telling themselves in their mental body, no, I want connection. I'm looking for connection. I'm plugging in for connection. There's just something wrong with every connection I have found. Not really ever doing the deep dive to know that what was wrong is, you know, uh, some wound within themselves that is trying to avoid suffering and doesn't want to open up and be, 
you know, vulnerable and allow an opportunity for suffering to come into their life. And it's like once they just take that passing glass glance inward with that question of, you know, why, why aren't I able to let this go when I have had no problem walking away from everything else in my life and everyone else in my life? Why now? Why this person? Why Pisces? And then it's like what they find within themselves is is a deep inner knowing that maybe this is something meant to be, something that they are wanting to um it holds the possibility of what they they have been telling themselves that they want. And then that can lead to deeper introspection, right? Because if this is what I want, why did I run from it? Right? So you've got somebody coming in here. And you know, it's like, if you've ever driven with like a brand new driver, especially like on the highway the first time, that is the definition of white knuckles. Like they're gripping that steering wheel. They're very frenetic. They're very nervous. They're looking all around. They're scared. You know, going that fast with people in that proximity, oftentimes driving semi-recklessly themselves. It's a lot for somebody to handle until you have the confidence that you've done it many, many times and you've been successful. That's how this energy feels. It feels like this is somebody who's coming in who really wants to be able to drive their car on the highway. They really want to be having a soft place to fall and they really want to explore this connection. And they sense that this connection has a better chance than any connection that they've been involved in and that there's a reason why they have not been able to let this go. And they're coming back and they're very determined and they're very determined to get good at it and to be successful at it. But they're also like not experienced at it and not really, um, they're committed to it. They're real committed to it. They're very determined, but they don't have the finesse. They don't have like sophisticated tools. It's kind of like, let me just get in there and do just go for it and just fake it till I make it, you know, just keep trying until it works out until we get where we're trying to go. So there's a significant change happening here in a relationship. There's a significant change happening within someone and what they're really open to admitting, I feel like. Let's dive into the tarot. We are using the tattoo tarot today and I love this deck. All right, Spirit, what can you show us for Pisces? What is happening in this person's mind space for Pisces? What else can you show me? Yeah, all right. So you have the Four of Pentacles and the Six of Pentacles in this person's mind space regarding you, Pisces, the, with the Seven of Wands on the bottom of the deck. This is an energy where I feel like, you know, this person is saying, you know, I can't let go, you know, um, with the four of pentacles and they may even be realizing or recognizing their own resistance or their own inability to open up, to receive the energy of the connection or to receive the love. Oh my gosh. Pisces, this person can let go of this connection because deep down inside, this person feels that this is a soulmate connection. They feel like this is their the connection that has, you know, I don't want to say like the most potential because the Two of Cups really isn't about potential and neither is the moon. I mean, I suppose it can be. Um, that word came to me. Um uh, so it, it, it can be like, you know, we, we don't even know what's possible in this relationship because we weren't allowed to find out with the moon card. It's still something that we has not been revealed what's possible here. And I can't let go until I know that can be. Um, it also can be that and this person really does have deep feelings and they're coming to the realization that they can't let go because they have deep feelings and that the reason that they they were so resistant is because they couldn't handle it. You know, um, they are, they, they may be really discovering that, you know, there's somebody who really doesn't do well with emotions or, um, really hasn't 
been in love before or hasn't experienced unconditional reciprocity reciprocity in love um and they didn't know how to handle it fear and illusion took over with the moon card let's see what the six of pentacles is this person knows that they have to wow be able to come in and offer something that they didn't offer in the past I feel like this person has to really take a leap of faith. It's like in the past that this was being offered to this person. Yeah, but they were too blocked off. They had too many burdens. They weren't able to open up and receive this because they were blocked off. They, they, you can't open up and hold on to something when your, your arms are already full. You know what I mean? And so this person may have rejected it, may have not understood what was being offered to them, may have been distracted you know, there could be a lot of things, but this person really at the end of the day was not open to receiving what was being offered to them in the past. And therefore they couldn't really reciprocate this person. Um, and they may have even had like kind of a fear or something around uh, commitment with the hierophant there. This person is understanding that they, it is on them to, I feel like initiate giving in this connection to initiate some kind of, um, opportunity here. I feel like they know they're going to have to come forward. They're going to have to be very willing to risk it, to be very open, to be very open to whatever return, you know, whatever comes back to them from you, Pisces, whatever you're saying. With the seven of wands here, this person recognizes what being blocked off did or has happened. Um, Wow, I, I just keep getting, okay, I just keep getting a lot of, there's a lot of energy right here in the mental body. And with the seven of wands, it's like, it's kind of like seeing that their kind of defense mechanisms are what got this into the place that it's in. And they are going to have to come forward and show that they have dropped these defense mechanisms and the seven of wands on its other end of its spectrum is fighting for something. And so this can be where this person wants to show that where they were once resistant, now they are ready to fight for a connection here or fight for an opportunity. The fool and the two of cups, clarifying the four of coins and the six of coins, plus the four of coins and the six of coins add up to the 10 of coins. All right, what is in the heart space? The heart space. Wow. Okay. This person, in their heart of hearts, they really want to come forward. You know, they desire another opportunity here. This person, there with the five of wands in the heart space, this person has difficulty. They have a block. They have, you know, some capacity to sort of cut themselves off from their emotion. Um, and this may have really been triggered or exposed even to them by this connection, the two of cups and the six of cups. This is a strong soulmate connection. This is something where it's like, it's not that you don't feel it or that somehow feeling is absent altogether. It's that you don't allow yourself to process what you're feeling with the five of wands, the two of cups and the six of cups. It's like, it's there but you aren't ready to acknowledge it. You aren't ready to open up to it. You aren't ready to embrace it. And I feel like this person realizes that, um, you know, with the knave of wands, it's like they may not have been willing to fully choose this relationship or fully commit to this relationship. They may have, um, it, it, not because they didn't feel love or not because it wasn't there, but because they were not, able to process it. They weren't able to acknowledge it and to be motivated by it and to make their choices and decisions using that information. Um, with the seven of coins, justice and the knight of wands, 
I feel like this person has told themselves that they really do want to come in and try to make it right. They want to come back in. There's a heavy emphasis here on balance with the justice and the six of coins. I think with the seven of coins falling on justice, there's an energy here of like, I need to do this at the right time. I need to do this in the right way. And it can also be where this person has begun, you know, investing in this connection in their own heart space, you know, where they have, they're, they're going slow and they're being methodical, but they're also looking at that blockage that exists within themselves. And they are acknowledging that this is something that prevented this connection from being in balance in the beginning in the, to begin with. And with the Knave of Wands and the Knight of Wands here, they strongly desire now a, a chance to make it right a chance to do the right thing a chance to balance it out and i think they're recognizing their own limitation with that five of wands and they're understanding that if this is what they desire then they have to figure out how to dismantle that five of wands before they come back and with the seven of coins this person is investing in that they are um they are putting work toward it you know um, it, Rome wasn't built in a day and, you know, this isn't coming down in a day, but this is someone who is, you know, how in the be very beginning, I kept talking about a choice. We have a choice to bury our heads in the sand and blame the other person, or we have a choice to look at whatever thing we may have contributed, or even to look at our wounding and lean into it instead of running from it and cutting ourselves off from it. It holds all the answers. So this person is making that choice to invest in this moment to to kind of allow this connection to be the catalyst to change something that was preventing them from even having what they desired themselves um i'm just gonna see what if any clarifications come out on this heart space energy altogether Yeah, see, this person has let their mind, wow, determine, whoa, Jesus. This person has let their mind determine their heart, not their heart impact their mind. Do you know what I'm saying? They, This person isn't like, wow, I'm feeling these things. Let me see how can I work this into my life. This person is like, Love is bad. Relationships defeat you. You don't want any suffering. You've had all the suffering you can take in life. You cannot open yourself up again because you can't withstand the blow. Da, 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 da. And this mentality has actually prevented this person from really being able to find emotional contentment within their, their own self. And, um, this person is working on this. I feel like this person is definitely trying to take control of the situation. Yeah. You have the King of Wands right underneath the Emperor. Some of you are dealing with a fire sign. You also have Libra here. You also have Aries, Aquarius. Um, I'm sure more will come out, but anyway, this is where this person is realizing. I mean, this is classic, like, where Rumi says, seek not love, seek instead the barriers you have built within you against it. And it's like, that's what this person is doing. Their heart is starting to be more, take charge. The heart is starting to be the more important voice in the room with this person, um, where they're, they're, they're having to take control and they're having to say, it's almost an empower it, it, an energy that is where they're empowering their heart or they're giving their heart more room to make the decisions or to have input, um, strong input. They're valuing and prioritizing what their heart is telling them and the direction their heart is leading them in, in a new way here with the emperor on the bottom of the deck and the king of wands. It's like they're letting their their heart lead the way to what they desire and what they go after here. What is this person's intentions with Pisces? Please spirit. What is this person's intentions? Okay. What is the death card? 
Wow. All right. This person is definitely fantasizing and they're not just fantasizing. They're kind of running scenarios in their mind here. Um, they are, there's an energy here with the Knight of Cups on the bottom of the deck and the Seven of Cups on the bottom of the deck. It's like, I want to follow my heart. I want to move toward Pisces. How am I going to do this? What does it look like? And it's like, it's almost like acting out in your head, the different scenarios of, okay, well, I could do this, or I could come at it like this. I could DM on Insta. I could do this. I could do that. But you know, this person really it, in their mind, they want to present themselves as someone who is free to participate in a balanced connection now with the full card and the six of pentacles. And they really want to convey that I feel like right away that they are trying to do the right thing, that they have changed, that they are willing to really open up and, you know, give everything they have to the connection to not hold back, to not let these blockages bother them. This person, though, they are recognizing with the Knight of Coins and the Four of Swords, they have to go slow. They're not fully healed or they're still healing it's not even not being fully healed, okay? Because healing is not linear. It's cyclical. It, anybody that's, you know, like you lose your mom or something. I mean, I'm just saying that because I lost my mom last summer or something. But um, the thing is, it's like you lose your mom and you go through that initial process of grief of just like, wow, you know, um, I've lost my mom and all the things that that entails. And then you're fine. But then it's like Christmas comes up and you're like, I don't have my mom. So even though we made it through the initial grief process, the it doesn't say, okay, well, that grief is never going to show its face again. No, it is. If, if, if the catalyst happens, if the trigger happens, if the day comes, that it's like, oh man, this really reminds me of that person. Or you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's going to come back up. And this person very responsibly in their intentions is acknowledging that with the Knight of Coins and the Four of Swords. It's like, I have to go slow, I uh, slowly, because I'm, I'm still in this transition. I've been through a major a major transformation here and I'm trying to do the right thing, but I don't have a ton of practice at it and I'm still healing. And I recognize that healing is a process where I could still get triggered or I could still be put in a situation that makes me feel the way I felt back there. And I don't want to make that decision again. I'm trying to avoid that through this. But with the King of Coins and the Ace of Wands, it's like this person wants to step up and say to you, I have very serious intentions. I, I have worked to make myself someone who can, you know, be in this energy and can um, show up for you. And I know what I want. And I want this. And I want to know where it can go. And I am willing to open myself up in ways that I was not willing to open myself up before, but it is still a process that I am still working on. And it's not to say that I'm not going to slip up or that I'm not going to have a moment where it all feels too heavy and I need to take a break. Um, so this person is coming at this extremely responsibly, extremely determined, you know, with a very solid earthy grounded energy here. And they, their, their, their main concern here with justice on the death card is righting the wrong, is restoring the balance in a connection that, you know, they don't want to have end. It's like, if you don't want something to end, then you have to make a decision to, to step up to prevent the ending. And that's what this person is definitely what I feel them definitely trying to do. And they're just trying to figure out how do I go about this? All right. What actions is this person possibly going to take here in the near future? What actions is this person possibly going to take? All right. I'm going to clarify. All 
I feel that with the lovers, the nine of coins and the 10 of wands, there's this energy of kind of, it's almost to me like this person, you know, they never acknowledge their feelings. They never, where is that card? It's right here. The unsaid. This person has never, you know, first of all, when they had the opportunity to choose this relationship or to choose their burdens and their blockages, they chose their burdens and their blockages. And I feel that this person has completed this cycle. They have released these burdens and these blockages. I feel like they're trying to also um, release the weight and the burden that they feel in regards to not having acknowledged your worth and your value and their level of attraction to you and it's like they may never have told you how they saw you or how they kind of felt that you were kind of the whole package. I mean, the nine of coins is like the pre empress. So I feel this energy of really acknowledging that their choice, their past choice was made on choosing their burdens and instead of this connection and that it has become very burdensome and heavy for them to continue to carry it around that they never really told you. They never really acknowledged how special and amazing and wonderful that you really were to them. And that has become a burden. And with the, the lover's card on the bottom, it's like they, they want to let you know that It's like you have the Hierophant, the Three of Wands, the Eight of Wands, and the Queen of Pentacles. It's this energy of, you know, they want to choose the other thing now. You know, they want to choose the relationship now. And if that means commitment, then that means commitment. This person with the Three of Wands has been standing at a distance to this connection, trying to get used to ideas like this, trying to see themselves in a committed relationship, trying to kind of close the distance within themselves of being able to allow themselves this type of thought process. They're going to be communicating a lot about what they have learned. I feel like about themselves in this time of separation and there's a lot of communication that wants to come through about your value and your worth and what possibly even you sitting in your value and their worth kind of made them realize or recognize or open up to see. Um, so there's a, there's communication here of saying things that have not been said before. Um, and kind of trying to make things right that way. But it's I, I, with the three of wands, I just keep getting this energy of like, I'm trying to make you see what I see. I, you know, I'm trying to like, it's like this person may not have ever done that before. They may have just shut down and not talked about it and been like, I don't know. I don't know it here though, with the eight of wands and the three of wands, there's this energy of like, you know, I want you to understand the, all of it. You know what I mean? The way that I saw it or the way that it happened for me, my experience of it. So, that, so there's communication here. The strengths card. Mm -hmm. This person definitely, I feel like, you know, there's an energy here of, of, Again, there is acknowledgement of kind of like regret or of, you know, I, 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 I'm actually getting like, I failed you or I failed this connection with this five of cups. It's like, you know, I'm look, I've, I've had this opportunity to look back on the past and to, you know, really see what happened back there and how all these cups spilled and how we had such an opportunity and where it went and why. And with the four of swords coming out sideways, this is an energy and transition. This is someone who, 
you know, has had to take a cold, hard look at themselves with the five of wands here. They've had to look at that blockage in their heart. They've had to look at how they've allowed these things to sort of control and drive their life and drive their decision making. And with the strength card here, this is where we overcome those lower vibrational tendencies within ourselves. But I felt like with the four of swords coming out sideways, this person again is just acknowledging it's a work in progress. You know, instead of resisting, I'm trying to free myself from these, um, from this blockage and from this fear and this regret that was really driving my decision making or that led to all these cups spilling for us in the past. I'm really trying to do different. I've, I have done some kind of healing process or I have at least spent some time introspecting with myself and, and I've seen where my, my choices and my behavior have really affected this relationship. And with the strength card here, it's, it's an energy of getting your confidence together to make some kind of move, to make some kind of change, to do something. We do see the five of coins, the five of cups, and the five of wands. This person is going through a major change. And they're really, they continuously acknowledge that this is a major change in their, in every energy that they're showing me. It's like the death card. It's like the, all these fives. It's like, you know, it's like this person keeps acknowledging like, you know, this is my first kind of attempt or this is my best, the best I've ever done trying to fix this or trying to do different or trying to make a different choice here. But I, I am, I am still healing. I am still, you know, I'm someone who's coming from a scarcity mindset and that scarcity mindset has caused me to have blockages and to do things that I regret. And I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to overcome that. I'm trying to, you know, have a totally different approach to life and to overcome these lower vibrational tendencies that I, I'm finally ready to acknowledge that I even have. I feel like this person may not have totally acknowledged it. For some of you, yeah, I think they did, but I I don't think they did it in a constructive way of like, here's how I'm overcoming it. I think they did it in a woe is me because this is my story kind of way. And that's not super hopeful because somebody who's gotten very attached to their story um, is somebody who is sometimes pretty likely to use that story as an excuse to not change or to not do different or an excuse for their behavior. This person is not trying to excuse their behavior. I don't feel it. I feel that this person is really trying to acknowledge that they're human and that they see this and that they're aware of this and that they're working on it, but that they're not perfect. Okay. Four of Cups. See, this person is going to tell you, I wasn't able to unconditionally love. I wasn't able to accept what you were offering me and I wasn't able to return it with that four of cups. And we saw that before, uh, somewhere up here, but the four of cups, um, it, it will, it's, it's, you know, until, If you've got the five of wands in your heart space, you're going to have an awful time trying to accept the love that someone else is giving you. And you're not going to be able to point blank period, let love flow through you and from you because you have a blockage. And even if you are receiving the love, you're not receiving it in a way in which you're just sort of taking, you're like a bottomless cup and you're just sort of taking and this person with the page of cups in reverse, the four of cups upright and the three of swords here, they're acknowledging that their wounding prevented them from being able to accept what you were offering before. And that this is, you know, there, I feel they're going to pour that there is an element with this page of cups of pouring their heart out. You know what I mean? Like really saying, really coming clean, really saying like, yeah, I just wasn't in a place to even accept what you were offering me. I sh and I certainly couldn't have returned it. I feel like this person is going to apologize with this page of cups, but beyond the apology, I feel this person is really trying here in their actions to, you know, express the best they can, where they came from, how they saw it, how they felt about it, what they're trying to do to kind of overcome it, 
how it how they know their part in the relationship was destructive was not in alignment with this connection really moving forward this is definitely someone who is in the throes of evaluating all of these things with the the seven of coins coming up in their intentions and the seven of cups this person is still working through this like i don't think this is someone who's going to step up and come to you tomorrow i do feel that this is someone who is on the precipice of like a real major change in the wind, a real major breakthrough where I do feel like they will step forward in a very heartfelt way. Much more, I, I mean, almost like a shockingly heartfelt. Yeah, this person, they do really want to have success. Look at that. The six of wands, the four of wands, the three of pentacles. I mean, this person wants to do it right. You know, that's how I feel. Oh, Pisces. Wow. Let's get some messages. I'm just trying to see if there's anything. Let me just ask, what is the best possible outcome? Let's just do it real quick. Come on. What is the best possible outcome for this situation for Pisces? Let's say for the month of February. Eight of Cups on the bottom of the deck. Wow. There's that Three of Wands again with the Ace of Wands again. Page of Pentacles, Wheel of Fortune, Knight of Cups, King of Cups. Okay, this person literally is seriously trying to get some emotional mastery. This person is still in the process. Oh my gosh. Wow. Of walking away. This person. Oh my. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This person's going through a lot, I feel like. Um, this person, there is an acknowledgement. I feel like that there are either people in their environment that are preventing them from really being able to pursue their own happiness. Like, this can be people that, this can be like, you know, if you have like an overbearing family member or you, you have a toxic family that's constantly, you know, causing disruptions or preventing you from being able to kind of like act on your desires or they shame you for what you want or for what makes you happy. Like they really are trying to, it's like maybe they're not happy and they don't want you to be happy. It can be friends. It can be family. It can be, it can be a toxic ex. It could be anybody. Right. But it's like this person is still trying to get to a place of emotional mastery where they feel comfortable having the emotions that they feel for this connection and being able to like act upon them without having it be super reactionary. You know what I'm saying? And so with the eight of cups and the tower moving toward the nine of cups on the bottom of the deck here, there's a lot in this person's life that it feels like isn't supportive of this person taking any real action or actually even possibly finding this ability to emotionally master themselves. You know, this can be people who, you know, with the five of freaking swords, the, it, it can be people who are constantly putting things in your head like, oh, that's not going to work. Oh, that's not good enough. Oh, nobody's ever really going to love you. Are you kidding? You're just a piece of crap. Or after you did that to them, they're never going to take you back. You know, that kind of energy. They may be surrounded by that with the five of swords. It's it's defeating energy. It can also be them with them in their own thoughts. Um, but something is breaking down and this person is having to leave something behind before they can come forward to you, before they can actually go for what it is they really want. It's like they have to kind of close out a cycle or they have to walk away from something that would bring instability to this connection regardless. So this person is coming forward. I think they're coming forward. They're still at a distance. They're coming forward when they feel that they have the stability and the strength emotionally to participate in this connection. This could be this month. This is a lot of change, a lot of change. Wheel of Fortune Tower, kind of a lot of change, which has been coming out a lot. 
Um, so I think, you know, everybody's on a different timeline, but we do have someone who is planning and strategizing for sure how to have that new beginning that they want. They are hoping that they have learned the spiritual lessons of this relationship and that they are going to get another chance to make a different decision or to make a different choice or to make an offer or to do the kind of the right thing to balance out the connection. They are going to come forward with their heart in their hand as soon as they feel they are strong enough to do that and that they have created the environment that allows them to do that. All right, now let's get your message cards, shall we, Pisces? For Pisces. If you're dealing with a water sign, you're getting love scares me. You see my soul. Our time will come. And I don't understand these feelings I have. If you're dealing with a fire sign, you are getting, will you allow me to come back? I am a lost soul. I'm drowning in my emotions. You make me want to do better. I took advantage of you. My heart is heavy on the bottom there. If you're dealing with an earth sign, never felt anything like this before. I miss your tender lips. I have a hard exterior. I can't look at you in the eyes and I'm waiting for the right time. Yeah, there is an element of timing with the seven of pentacles and the wheel of fortune. This is divine timing. It will happen when it's ready to happen. And honestly, you don't really want it, especially with somebody who is doing the work and who is allowing transformation and change to take place. You don't want it to come faster than they're ready for it, you know, because you're just denying yourself really like their highest and best self. If you're dealing with an air sign, you were the whole package. Please accept my apology. You have a gentle and pure heart. I have maturing to do. I'm still stuck. So yeah, this is somebody who's still working on themselves, but they are working on themselves. They have the intention of coming forward. They are planning. They are strategizing a new beginning here. They are going through a lot of change. A lot is going on in the heart space. A million cups are in this reading and a million wands. Um, so, and a lot of actually earthy energy, which is someone who's really, there's something happening here in the material world. It's coming together. So Pisces, this is what I have for you today. I really hope that it helps. I hope it brought you some peace and some clarity. If it did, let me know, like, share, subscribe, comment. I really appreciate it. Until next time, guys, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Bye-bye.